look at um, fashion. So the first one is um, first term is fashion. And you know that with fashion, it is the style accepted by a specific group of people. It's not all people, it's not everybody. So please be remember when you have a look at this definition, it's a specific group of people at a given time and or place, right? Um, or we can say it's a style of clothing that the majority of people in a country or age group or area is currently wearing. It is not all people. So please be aware of that. So um, we will see I've got illustrations on um, fashion from previous era. So that's why we can have a look at fashions at a specific time um, in the past, etc. Right. Um, and we know that it influences all aspects of our lives. So that is important to remember with that term. Then we move on to um, a term known as um, haute couture, right? This is also known as high fashion. So on your set of notes, um, please just check, and I'm quickly going to go to the notes again. On your set of notes. You will see over here, it says Wachmode. That's the, 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 the um, Afrikaans terms so are just change it to high fashion, right? And so this, we will see here, refers to um, expensive and outrageous clothing, right? So when we talk about um, haute couture, this is normally the fashion that we see on the runway, right? So you need to know the characteristics of what is haute couture, what is high fashion. It's expensive, it's outrageous styles, it's produced by top um, designers, can only be afforded by the rich, it changes constantly, it's high fashion, right? Um, so those are the characteristics that I'm talking about when we look at certain, um, um, some of these terms that you need to keep in mind, okay? So, because we need to have a look at the differences between these terms as well. The illustration, okay? So we all know what high fashion is. We've seen it, we've seen the runways, et cetera. We know about the models and all of the rest. Okay, so that is what haute couture or high fashion refers to. Something that you need to know, something that you need to study, right? Then when we have a look at style, um, this is spe the specific characteristics that make one product or item different from an, uh, another product of the same type. On your um, illustration for style, you've got shoes. So we all know that's one, product, it's all shoes, but we can see that there's different styles of shoes. Okay, we've got high heels, we've got flat heels, we've got a uh, wedge, etc. So specific characteristics that make one product or item different from another product of the same type, like for example, um, I've got pants here. So yeah, these are all pants, but these are all pants. But what we find here is that um, it's different cuts of pants. Okay, so there you can see palazzo, wide, flared, boot cut, straight, cropped, skinny, et cetera. So that we can differentiate between different styles um, of the same product. That is basically what it is, right? The style will stay in fashion for as long as it's accepted. Okay, and then it becomes fashion when it's accepted by a large group of people. It's not all people that normally um, where's the fashion a large group we refer to. Then there's another term of importance to you, that's classic styles, okay? Um, these are styles, designs, colors, fabrics that remain popular over a long period of time. Okay, so what are the characteristics of classic styles, right? They are continually accepted, they, so we refer to it as being timeless and are always considered as tasteful, right? And then they're characterized by simplicity, have simple lines. Um, and then of course, almost everyone looks good in it. So please remember when we talk about classic styles, when we have to elaborate about what it is, we refer to the characteristics, right? So let's quickly have a look at examples of classic styles, right? There you can see the little black dress, straight leg trousers, white shirt, cardigan, right? These are all examples of classic styles. And then, of course, blue den denim has been with us for a, for, a, for a whole while. So they are also regarded as classic styles. So you need to obviously know examples of classic styles as well. Then we go on to what is known as fads, right? Um, these, this is normally fashion. This is the definition. 
that has a high demand but lasts a very short time. Okay, so you will find um, when we have a look at, so um, what are the characteristics? It's got a very short life cycle. It's normally only one season. And then it becomes popular suddenly and disappears just as suddenly. It normally only lasts one season, as I've already said, okay? Um, and what you will find is that fads occurs frequently and in accessories such as jewelry, belts, and handbags, as it is noted in the set of notes that you've got there, right? And then just some other examples, just to give you an idea, right? Um, you might have an idea, but when you have a look at pictures, it actually helps to remember things a little bit better. So examples of fads, right? So you will see that it might, um, it, it, it might not have a lasting impression. It might last only for one season, it might be something that's in demand for a short while. Okay, so these are what these um, um, fashion items here um, indicates. Just before I get to the fashion cycles, um, I'm going to follow the order of your notes. So. I'm going to have a look at fashion trends next. Right? So when we look at fashion trends, remember this is the direction in which fashion moves, right? So where does it move to? It's constantly changing. We know that about fashion, it's not static. Um, sometimes um, the changes, we can see that at a certain time, everybody, everybody were wearing minis or maxis. Um, or we have, as I've got on here, um, when we have a look at men's ties or lapels become narrower or wider. So here we've got some tile styles, styles from the 70s, for example. So that was a fashion trend in the 70s versus what the ties and the tie styles look like today, just to give you an idea. Okay, so the direction in which the fashion moved. To understand it a bit better, um, when we have a look at different types of skirts, for example. So is the trend, is it flared? Is the trend straight cut? Is it pleated? Is it short? Okay, so a fa uh, so what direction is it moving in? That is a fashion trend. So these are just going to give you a better idea of what a fashion trend is. But as I said, these are terms that we should be able to um, differentiate between, right? And then in your notes there, you'll see they talk about contemporary fashion. These are the styles that many people accept and wear. So what is current? What is, what is current? That is what contemporary fashion refers to. Okay, It's normally mass produced and it's sold at average to low prices in the most clothing stores. Right. Then we get on to the next set of information that's of importance. And I must just remember that we've got limited time just gonna um, browse over with you so um there's certain things that influences fashion okay so these are the um things that we're looking at major international fashion shows because um before fashion starts right or this is where they normally start with trends etc right other things um is retro retrospective fashion and i just quickly want to stand here we're going to come back to this one um what designers do is that they look at the past for inspiration, they reinterpret the fashion, and it comes back with a modern twist, right? So this is also um, something that influences um, contemporary fashion, stuff that we're wearing today. They look at the past, right? Um, clothes that imitate the style of a previous era, we can also say. Okay, um, so let's just quickly stop here and have a look at it. Remember that retrospective fashion is not an original antique or vintage garment. In other words, it's not an old garment. Okay, that's been somebody had in their family since the 50s or whatever. It is um, um, modern fashion that's got inspiration from the past. So let me just give you an idea. Um, that's why I say illustrations always makes it a bit easier. Right, here we can see two fashion icons wearing, the one is um, obviously wearing um, a black little number there from about around the 50s. And here you can see Victoria Beckham wearing it, um, reinterpreted, okay? Just changed a bit, but the black little number, 
And the same with the 60s dress over here, there, that inspiration, there we can see where um, Victoria Beckham found the inspiration for the green dress, right? Um, and the same on the catwalk even. Okay, so here we can see an example of the from the catwalk, right, where it found its inspiration from the 20s. Okay, so this is what we need to know. We need to know what retrospective fashion is, but we also know that it influences um, contemporary fashion. And then just to differentiate between retrospective fashion and vintage, these are normally original anti garments or from a previous era that people wear as is. Okay, so there we can see some wedding gowns and some dresses from previous eras, right, that people will wear as is. So just so that you know, but those um, retrospective fashion is the one that influences it, but just the difference there between vintage and retrospective fashion. Right, then another factor that influences contemporary fashion is social and cultural factors, right? Um, so we know that designers normally also get inspiration from social events, um, what's happening, what's up, Olympics, popular TV series, movies, etc. right? So that might influence um, the, um, the way in which fashion moves. And then clothes that's worn by celebrities like actors and sports stars also influences fashion. Okay, so that, and then of course, there's an illustration right, of a celebrity always showing off their clothing, and that is where um, inspiration is normally taken from, right? And then other factors, economic factors, here yeah, it's got to do with money. If there's an increase in consumer income, it means that people will have more money, disposable income maybe, um, to afford to buy new clothes. However, if we've got high inflation, it will lead to everything being more expensive and consumers will tend to buy less. So we need to know these um, Factors and then the last one here is the fading boundaries between the sexes, right? Um, so we see uh, that um, differences between male and female clothing starts to disappear. So we refer to certain types of clothing um, as unisex clothing that can be worn by both the males and females. And examples there t shirts, jeans, tax suits, running pants. Okay, so there I've just got an, a lovely illustration, right? Then another important thing that you um, Okay, before I go on so quickly, um, grade 12, right? I'm sorry that I'm rushing through stuff here, um, but I want you to get the idea of what are the important things. But at this stage, quickly, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to see if you can, without looking at the notes, just quickly um, answer 1.1.1 to 1.1.5. You, you know that you just need to write A, B, C, D, what, um, whatever one. Um, fits with those. So if you can quickly just do that for the next two minutes or so, right, and then um, mark it when we're done before we're going to go into different fashion cycles. So while you're busy with that, just remember that um, you need to time yourself during the exam and questions like this, you don't want to leave open. Okay, you want to have answers for each number to improve your chances of getting it right. Even if you are a little bit confused, rather do it than leave it open. I'm giving you until, yeah. Okay, another couple of seconds. Hopefully everybody um, is um, trying to get the answers. Right. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the answers. You can just mark it. At the end, what I want you to do, um, I've got four of these, which is going to bring us to a mark out of 20. Okay, so at the end, just have a look at 
um, how you've scored. Um, this is just to give you an, an idea of your um, listening ability, your ability to concentrate and take in information. I know it's a lot of information, but it's information that you've already studied. It's information that you already know. So just highlighting the important things. So here we go. Okay, so there we go. Um, you can quickly use a couple of seconds just to quickly mark. So 1.1 is C, 1.1.2 is F, 1.1.3 is B, 1.1.4 is D, and 1.1.5 is E. Just to give an idea of how the question can be asked. Okay, I think that should be enough time for everybody. Hopefully everybody could mark it. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, so I'm going back up because now I just want to go back up to fashion cycles. Okay, so as with everything in life, fashion also occurs in cycles. Right? So the, you will see with fashion, the fashion cycle, we look at the beginning, the introduction, also known as the beginning or the introduction is or where it starts. Um, and then the other main um, stage is the peak, where it peaks. And then, of course, there is um, when the fashion becomes obsolete, when it's rejected at the end. Right? Those are the three main stages we look at. But what happens within, with, with, within those stages is we've got an acceleration or a rise. And we've got a decline, a fall of the fashion. So let's quickly just understand, right? So normally what happens with fashion cycles is that the fashion is introduced by the fashion innovators, um, the designers, etc. Um, and here we find that only the, the, the rich can normally afford it because it only starts out, right? I just I want to have a pointer over here. So I'm talking about over here right, introduction, and then gradually as more and more people are um, liking the fashion or buying into the fashion, more people are wearing it, right, um, it might still not be as readily available, right, during the rise, um, here we see it says fashion leaders purchase from traditional retailers in their better department, so it starts to be um, more seen in magazines and all of that, until everybody becomes aware of the fashion and everybody wants it, then we see it's peaked. Okay. So in other words, there's mass acceptance, right? Um, we find it in all stores, in the high-end stores, in the low-end stores, we'll find it. It's mass produced. It's been made affordable for everybody to afford it, right? So that is when it peaks. And then we find that once people are now, once they've had enough of the fashion, it starts to decline, right? Um, there is um, a less demand for this uh, fashion, right? It become, it's not as readily available, right? And in this instance, now it might even become cheaper, okay? So now the stores wants to get rid of this fashion because it's declining, right? Um, until it is totally rejected, okay? Um, it reaches obsolescence. In other words, um, where people no longer, they're no longer interested in the style, okay? Um, because the cycle has made um, space for a new style. All right, so please just note here, the rise of one fashion overlaps with the decline of the previous fashion. Um, and then of course, the required time for a fashion cycle to change its full course. Okay, let's quickly have a look at that time. Remember that we spoke about, a, we speak about a standard fashion. Yeah, it's, known, it's, 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 it's named a mainstream fashion. We speak about a fad, so when we speak about a standard fashion or a fad or a classic, we can actually differentiate between the three when we have a look at a fashion curve as easier. This represents time. So you will see, we've already said a fad, right? These are st a style that appear suddenly, but also disappears just as suddenly and normally only lasts a season. So you can see that it, the, um, the demand is high quite quickly, but then it dies just as suddenly, as you can see, that's basically what happens. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Hi, uh, we have a comment here from Goodwood College. Yeah. They say that they do not have those questions. They only have questions from number 1.3. 1.3? 1. 
1.2. Yeah. In the booklet, you mean? I'm not quite sure. This was sent yes, through on the yes, WhatsApp sorry, line. Sorry, can you just tell them that was the idea that we don't use that questions now, the questions from the book um, now, that we use other questions just to so that the learners can have a look at the screen and then answer? Okay, thank you, ma'am. That was the idea, yes. Okay, just thank you. a little bit interactive. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so um, that's a fad. So if you are given these three curves and you need to differentiate between them, okay, you need to see the differences in terms of time and in, in terms of general um, amount of people that will be wearing it, okay? Um, and then, of course, the mainstream fashion we've said remain fashionable for a longer period of time, two to three years, right, um, over a year before it becomes obsolete. And then we know with a um, classic fashion, it remains fashionable for long periods of time. You can see initially not a lot of people buy into it. Um, if we have a look at that over years, how it starts, but it will stay in fashion for a much longer time. Okay, so with these curves, it actually just um, helps you to differentiate between the three um, there, as you can see. Okay. Right. Then in your booklets, you will see I've already spoken about fashion trends. I'm going to go to the book. Okay, so let's have a. I've completed that one with you. So I'm going to go to um, why fashion changes. Okay, so we're starting with economic factors over here. And as I said, some of these I will have to um, browse over with you. Okay, so we need to know what economics refers to. So here you can see it refers to recession, depression, inflation, wealth, poverty. So these factors can either accelerate or slow down. So um, if they refer to any of these fact, uh, these ones under economic factors, um, you need to be able to say, if we have a look at things like recession, depression, right, or poverty um, or inflation even, we know that in times when there's recession or depression that people won't have a lot of money, so it will slow down fashion change. Where people have money, right, to spend on clothing, it will increase, right, or accelerate fashion change. So just the um, the, the differences there, right? And then, um, yeah, you'll see where credit facilities are also readily available. People will obviously um, have money to spend, okay? Okay. Um, so in, in, in some countries, in some places where people don't have money, fashion change will be really, very slow. Um, and then social factors, geographical living patterns, level of education. So you need to know um, um, under social factors, which of these um, are going to have an effect, okay? Um, level of education, wars, disasters, religious beliefs, perceptions, and lifestyles, okay? So, um, we know that celebrities are being imitated, right? Geographical living patterns will also determine how quickly fashion change. If you live in a large city um, where things are readily available, it tends to change much easier and quicker um, because people are more exposed to it. Um, where there's increased mobility. Um, so in other words, when we talk about increased mobility, it talks about um, people traveling, um, the world is becoming a village. People can um, reach places quite uh, much more easier. Um, and, and so fashion can also change much more easier because people travel around much more easier. Um, and then, of course, where people have high levels of education, right, um, they've got better access to resources. So that also then helps it to change quite readily, right? Um, and then, of course, technological factors. Here we look at um, the developments in the textile industry. Um, and we will see that all of these factors um, will accelerate fashion change, new textiles being developed, materials, improved communication, and then improved um, distribution methods as well. Okay, so we find that te textiles with new characteristics are developed. We find that when we have a look at um, the textile industry, it has become much more easier to produce um, textiles so that's why it uh, we find that it actually all accelerate fashion change and then in improved distribution methods as well um we all know that if let's let me give an ex example when Fushini 
um, is launching all of the summer range. It's going to be um, distributed to all of the stores nationally, um, all over South Africa, so that those clothing, so because we've got improved distribution methods, we've got roads and stuff that can be transported. So yes, and then improved communication as well. So um, yeah, you need to know, um, when we spoke about technological factors that these are the technological factors that we're referring to. And then of course, political and judicial um, or legal factors, right? Um, and so we know um, that fashion can be affected by laws and regulations of a country. And so we see that in some Middle Eastern countries, um, the laws determine what people can wear and what they're restricted in. So there we will see fashion changes it happens, but it's very, really slow. Okay, so you will see some modernized clothing that people are wearing, um, but it is slow. And then, of course, um, other things, the trade laws between countries will also have an effect on fashion change, right? So um, where people have um, good trade laws in countries, it means it will also help with fashion change. Okay, so the factors here are of, of importance, so we need to know those factors, right? And then here yeah, also availability of resources, money um, and credit. Okay, where credit facilities are available, like people can open a store account, they might not have the money immediately, but they can go and get the fashion and pay it off, right? So in that way, it will change also much easier. And then just in terms of contemporary fashion trends in young adults, these are the things that you need to be aware of, okay? Um, we know that you are all young adults, okay? So you know that fashion is very important to, to you, okay? And so um, why is it important to you? Because you want to be on trend, you want to be in fashion. So these are factors that you need to know about, right? Um, and we also know that it changes quite rapidly amongst um, the young adults, right? Um, and then some other things, they tend to be adventurous and revealing, okay? Because, um, yeah, they're young, and they take chances. Um, and then other reasons why it's important for the um, young adults is that it's seen as an opportunity for them to give expression to their personal style, right? Um, and then also they want to fit in, okay? Because they want to fit in, they want to have peer acceptance. And then we also find during this stage that social status are of importance. So these are all factors that you need to know about why is um, um, the fashion change for young adults, why is it important? Okay, um, and then other things that are of importance to them is, is brand names. Um, why is it important? Because they see it as a, um, a as a status. Okay, when they wear brand names, they're seeing as their status improving. Um, also, they use, also use it to gain popularity. Okay, so these are the important things that you need to be uh, aware of. And then what you'll notice is that um, because of this important point that we've just um, mentioned. Um, Lower income groups might revert, revert to buying fake items as long as they're branded. Okay, as long as they're branded, we'll still talk about fake items, etc. But they often um, will wear it. Um, and then, of course, they often wear cheaper garments from chain stores than to choose classic garments um, because ch fashion changes so quickly amongst the um, the young adults because they change from one year to the other, from one season to the other. So um, it makes sense that they actually um, buy the cheap, cheaper garments and they still, some of them are still in a growing phase as well um, from chain stores. So you need to be aware of that. The next one we're going to have a look at, just gonna open that one. Okay, let me just move up. Right, great. One is the role of appearance in the work environment. And here are just some important stuff that you need to know. Um, just remember that um, sometimes people forget that your appearance sends out a nonverbal message about you to other people. So you don't have to say anything about yourself. People read into what you wear, how you wear it, your facial expressions, your body language. And all this contributes to what is known as a nonverbal message. Okay, so that is why it's important um, a first impression is important. So you need to know what is a first impression. A first impression is what a person thinks of you when they first meet you, right? Um, it's the feeling that they get or the initial evaluation. 
And we, we find that these are often lasting impressions when people meet you for the first time, they, they need to make their mind up about you um, and they have a, an impression and this might be lasting, especially if you don't get a, a chance to change their minds. And it's especially important when you go for interviews. Okay, so I've got just two illustrations over here. And as you can see, um, if, 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 if the doctor approached you, the top one, if you look at the male, if he approached you looking like he did um, with his tattoos and the red shirt, etc., um, I'm sure you wouldn't have allowed him to operate on you or to, um, yeah. So um, impressions, okay. I just wanted to um, want you to get the idea here yeah, that sometimes when you look at people because you, you 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 create an impression, you have an idea about this person, you might not. So in the instance where the guy has got his tattoos and his red shirt, you might have not thought of him as a doctor when you init initially if you meet somebody like that. So just so I just want that to sink in a bit. Okay, so so that you know about first impressions, but that's important that we know over there. So that's why it's important when you go for an interview, you should be dressed appropriately and smartly, right? Because this gives the, the impression that you are confident, ready to learn, good um, to work for the company. You need to know, this is information that we need to know. Okay, so information that I'm touching on is stu stuff that you need to know, right? So we need to dress, um, it says dressing for the respect in, in the office over here, right? But um, so when a person is interviewed um, or when he goes for an interview, right, you want to give the impression that you're confident, that you're ready to learn, that you're good to work for the prospective company. So if we, um, depending on, but um, if, if we generally just have a look at the, the two illustrations that I've got up on here in terms of working, Right, we can see the the attire that the ladies got on um here is more for partying and going out versus um the the dressing for respect in the office, for example. Okay, so that will be a no no, especially if we think in terms of going for an interview. Right, so please just be aware of that. Um, and then a very important pol um um a term here is dress code policy. Okay, so this is a set of rules about the type of company. Oh, sorry, the type of clothes that a company expects its employees to wear to work. Okay, so it might be unwritten, it might be written down. This is to ensure that employees look professional, fit in and feel part of the company. Okay, so please be aware of um, this term is very important. You need to know what this code policy is. Okay, so to create a professional image for the workplace, there you will see, um, I'm discussing it here in your set of notes. It, it's, yeah, later. Okay, not going to worry with that too much. You can have a read through that in your set of notes. I want to get to uniforms and corporate wear. Okay, so we also need to know. Um, I'm just also having a look. Right, so uniforms, we know that sometimes in um, work environments that people are um, to wear uniforms, are required to wear uniforms. Um, and so what was the importance of uniforms? It's um, easily identifiable clothing that must be worn daily, okay? Um, and so the advantages here, you need to know the advantages. And please, when you note the following, note the advantages, because sometimes they ask for the advantages for the employer or the employee, okay? So please note the differences there, okay? When you answer a question with regards to this, Right, helps to achieve a basic standard of appearance, can be used as protection, worn for hygienic reasons, employees are easily identifiable, right, and there I give you some examples of where people um, are required to wear uniforms, okay, so you need to know, know that. Then in terms of corporate wear, right, this is where um, clothing is used to project the image or identity of a company, okay, it may also include the logo of the company. Um, and so once here, people are easy to identify, identify the employees, companies might um, supply shirts, blouses, and jackets. And then, of course, um, the bottoms um, can um, be, um, employees can we then wear bottoms that suit them in a prescribed color. Okay. Yeah. So just be aware of this in terms of, um, for, the, for the employer, um, you will also find that it might it's, it's it's less stress for them, right? Less stress to have to decide what to wear because you know exactly what it is that you're going to be um, having to put on, right? So it's important that you know 
um, um, this information. Okay, so in terms of, I'm looking at time here as well. Right, so here are some guidelines when wearing clothes and accessories. Okay, so please people note the, the, the highlighted words there and you will see it's in bold in your notes as well. Um, basic colors, okay, when you start a working wardrobe, in other words, um, what is going to be the easiest to work with? It's going to be basic colors because these colors can match with a lot of other colors. Um, and then of course you need to know what your skin tone is or what colors complement your skin tone so that you can make um, nice informed choices, right? Clothing must fit well. And then of course it must suit your, your figure type, okay? Your body type, what are you, uh, apple or a pear, okay? And then um, some other things that we can work with a simple, classic simple styles. That should be the basis of your um, wardrobe. Mix and match, okay? Um, so stuff that you can mix and match because it means that you can, um, if you if you can mix and match, that you can make a lot of different outfits. And then it says use the times three principle. Each garment should at least match with three others. Um, undergarments must fit well, etc. Right. So these are things that you also need to know. Uh, it's, it's 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 stuff that we're going through, but it's guidelines that you need to be aware of. Um, and then they speak about accessories. Okay, can be chosen to make outfits fashionable and interesting. Or even if you have um, your classic styles, you can actually uh, modernize your, your clothing by making use of accessories, okay? So in your set of notes, furthermore there, um, there's information about types of accessories for men and women. So please just have a look at that. Um, and then of course you wanna get a good quality pair of shoes, classic style shoes important here that can match with most of your outfit so you want to be aware of that as well right so um in terms of starting a word working wardrobe as i said these are basic things that is of importance that you need to to know right then we move on to um when you're planning a basic wardrobe for the world of work, what are the factors that will influence your choices? So I'm not going to go. These are factors that you can um, go through on your own. I'm just going to um, name. Obviously, season climate um, is going to determine whether you're going to have winter or summer clothing. Right. So that's a factor. Once more, it's, it's stuff that you need to be aware of. Okay. And then the next one here is in terms of your budget. Okay, what is it that you can afford? By the best quality. Okay, then type of company that you're going to work with. If you're working for a corporate company, they might require more formal wear. Um, service industries require smart casual wear. Um, or if you're in a creative environment. So the type of company is going to determine the type of clothing that you're going to choose, the type of work activities, right? If you're a coach, obviously you're going to have some um, um, more relaxed sport clothing and uh, then for example if you're working in the garden etc so the type of work activities is going to be a factor figure type body shape okay, so that's why we've done this in grade 11 um, so we know the importance of that so that you can choose clothing that fits you well right and then of course your personality and individuality right um as well as your values will also determine the type of choices that you are going to make okay so they just sometimes people have got different types of personalities and that will influence the type of decisions that they are going to make and then of course we can make use of the design elements and principles that we've um, studied in grade 11 okay so it's still applicable and we need to apply it when we make choices okay Right, then um, in your set of notes, so I'm going to go to the set of notes again. You will find, um, I'm just going to get to it. And I've gone to that one. Right, so just over here, planning a basic um, um, working wardrobe. I'm sorry, um, just want to move down a bit. I'm talking about this. OK, 
Okay, so there are um, some things that you need to do before you start, okay, especially if you start um, a job, etc. Find out about the company's desk code um, policy, visit the workplace and see what the employees are wearing, um, see what your immediate head wears and determine your clothing style, keep your outfit simple, choose clothes that suit your body and facial features once more also um, latches onto stuff that we've said previously. Okay, and then um, you will find there are basic work order for a female. Um, okay, so yeah, the people you can go through this on your own. This is just um, the, the, the garments that they advise you to have when you start basic garments and then the explanation. Okay, so you can have a, 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 um, um, a look through those it's for the male and the female. Right, what I quickly want us to get to is the questions. So there is similar to the one that I've put on. Okay, short questions there. Um, and then I just want to quickly talk about these questions. Okay, there you can see the next one says explain the following terms. What I want you to note here says outcuta, but note the mark allocation is two marks. Then for fashion trend is one mark. Then for corporate clothing, it's two marks. So always be guided by the mark allocation when you answer. Okay. What I actually want to get to um, is 4.3, okay? So this is something that we've discussed previously. Let's see, you'll see it says the design in picture A resembles the design of a puff sleeve blouse of an earlier period era, like the one in picture B. In that Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. I'm very sorry to disturb you. Can you please increase the size again? Okay. It's just a little tiny. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Thank you. That's much better. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so there you can see what I want to say is already um, in that sentence, resembles the design of a puff sleeve blouse of an earlier era, period era like the one. That already should give you um, a clue as to what they're going to be asking. And you'll see it says name the type of fashion style that is inspired by past designers and so I know that you all know at this um, instance that it's a retrospective fashion okay so be on the lookout for things like that um, and then what we want to have a look at quickly is you'll see we've gone through the um, cycle as well it says the blouse in picture A is already past its peak in the fashion life cycle Name and discuss the last stage in the fashion life cycle that this thing is expected to go through. So it says name, so you name it, and it says discuss. Okay, so please, people, um, there's three marks, so you can't just, don't just name it. Always read your questions, tell you to understand. Um, let's quickly go to the answers here. Um, obsolete. Okay, that's one mark. Then you now need to discuss it to get the other two marks. The fashion cycle is now complete. The old fashion dies out and disappears. Okay, so you can, um, you now need to say what that is. So please um, have a look at that. And then I want to have a look at the following. So here we've got an outfit. It consists of a black and white stud t-shirt, black, so they give you information. Besides the fact that you've got an illustration, black jacket with a white pocket handkerchief, handkerchief uh, white sneakers, torn uh, blue jeans, sun, etc. Now it says, describe the optical illusion created by the black and white stud t-shirt. Now what is an, if you don't know what an optical illusion is, you will not, won't be able to answer this question. Okay, so optical illusion is when something seems, um, in a seemed like a, a is in a certain way, but which is it's not. So um, yeah, what they're talking about is the line. When we have a look at the line, what is the optical illusion that the stripes um, um, create in the T-shirt? Okay, so this is what you need to answer, right? So this is stuff that we've done in grade and we've touched on it, um, referring to some design elements and principles, but we've done it in grade 11. So you know that um, it's, they're talking about the horizontal lines, right? So they're talking about the horizontal lines. So always um, there, and we know that horizontal lines make something appear wider or broader. 
So that is what you want to say in your answer, right? Um, and then suggest four ways in which this outfit can be changed. Four ways suitable for a professional job, okay? So when you answer, please make your answer very clear, okay? As is illustrated over here, pants. Okay, you're referring to the pants now, first of all. Change the jeans into tailored pants in a neutral color, okay? Or black or gray or whatever you want to say, right? But be very specific when you answer. Shirt, replace the T-shirt with the, what are you replacing with what? Because here they're asking you to replace um, with a color, white, a white button-up color shirt and a tie. And then replace the, the shoes, the tackies with black leather shoes. And the jacket can remain, it can stay because it looks professional. Okay, so people, when you, it's important to when you answer questions that you do it thoroughly. Okay, have a look at what is asked. Please don't write just one word of um, stuff when you're supposed to be explaining, when you are supposed to give, be clear in, in answering. So I just wanted to say that in conclusion of um, the basic, um, yeah, in conclusion of um, factors to consider and um, appearance in the working environment. Right, it's now go to the consumer issues with regards to clothing and have a look at the important things there, right? We are slowly but surely getting to the end of our session. So I'm going to move back up. Okay. So now we are going to have a look at eco fashion. Okay, and the sustainable use of textiles and clothing. So these are consumer issues regarding to clothing. So the important thing here is that we know, first of all, what an eco fashion is. We need to know what sustainable textiles are. So we, and we need to know the differences between those. So you will see here in, of importance here, okay, eco or, or referred to as green fashion. So please just note that sometimes they refer to um, um, terms in one way or the other. So you always need to be aware of that, right? So when we look at eco or green fashion, it takes into account the environment, okay? Because we don't want to, um, we want to have a smaller um, carbon footprint, right? Um, and we don't want to um, have any harm to the environment, the health of consumers and the working conditions of people in the fashion industry. So be aware of that. These are all of the things that we talk about when we refer to eco or green fashion, okay? Um, there you can see the application. Um, they use organic raw materials. So we're going to have a look at the difference between what is an, uh, when we talk about organic materials versus sustainable textiles, right? And so they give you examples, organic cotton, hemp, bamboo fabric. So you need to know those. And um, what we need to know is that it's not stained or dyed. You can change that stain to dyed by harmful chemicals, often made from recycled and um, textiles right, or from second-hand clothes or plastic bottles, okay, so you will see these are all of the things, right, when we have a look at the um, um, eco fashion, right, um, the application here, the um, things that we um, refer to as what is used to make it eco fashion or green fashion, it's made to last lo uh, longer, so people can use it longer, it doesn't need to be replaced, so in that way we're going to actually um, also save the environment, and they make use of fair trading practices. This is something we're going to discuss just now, right? Um, so the whole thing is about when we have a look at um, eco fashion and sustainable use of textiles and clothing, it's about people wanting to reduce their carbon footprint, okay? So in other words, they don't want to cause harm to the environment, right? Okay, now you must just bear with me. Okay, there we go. Right, so when we have a look at sustainability, right, this is a term that you need to know by now. So it's an important term. It means that a product has minimal impact on the environment. Resources are not depleted or permanently damaged. It's produced in an economically viable way. And then important years, also the well-being of employees and others involved in the production process is taken into account. So it's important that you know the term, what the term sustainability uh, means, right? Um, and what it refers to, right? There's just some um, examples of 
unsustainable practices. You can have a read through those. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the next. Um, Um, the next page here and here we you see um we're going to have a look at organic textiles these are textiles that's grown organically without the use of herbicides or pesticides okay so please um note that but when we talk about sustainable textiles which is the one on the right or known as environmentally friendly um, uh, textiles um it says here inorganic textiles so the sustainable textiles, it's environmentally friendly textile fibers. Okay, so um, remember the one is made without the use of herbicides or pesticides, but here it's environmentally friendly. It's crops made from crops that can be planted and replanted without damaging the soil. And fewer chemicals are used during uh, the cultivation to limit soil damage. So just note the differences between the two here. Okay, um, then you will see, Right, here are examples of um, organic blends. Um, uh, uh, sorry, the, just this term as well, organic blends or synthetic fibers are made from natural resources that are combined with non-harmful chemicals. They are examples, okay? So be aware of those examples as well, okay? Um, right, and then just it must be the label. And then you also just need to know when can it become less eco-friendly? Right, when they use, make use of harmful dyes in the manufacturing, right, because the, the dyes contaminate the soil, can be harmful to the workers and to the consumers who wear it. So be aware of that as well, right? I'm going to go back up just to go and have a look at sustainable textiles on the other side. Okay, so in the, in the, in the, just note here with sustainable textiles, less water and energy is used in the manufacture and processing of the substances. So the waste is there for less. There's not, there's, there's, there will be waste, right? Um, so it's grown in an environmentally friendly way, right? And um, the other thing, it grows fast, requires few agricultural chemicals, but they still use um, chemicals and it produces a high yield, okay? So there you can see um, silkworms, fibers of animals such as wool, right um bamboo right so with bamboo you will see the plant grows fast and does not need pesticides or chemicals um plantations can be replanted annually right but they in in the processing chemicals are used but they do not harm the environment okay so and that's why we refer to it as um sustainable textiles and then of course your soy material easily planted and is biodegradable Right then, of course. Okay, and, and now I'm just gonna quickly go to okay, so sustainable, the um, just examples of those. Right, so um, what can we do? To reduce our um, carbo um, carbon footprint, reduce, reuse, recycle, of course, we um, you are aware of that, right? And so, um, and we know that there's certain things that they make use of, like recycling bottles um, to make um, chips that's going to be turned into fiber to make fabric. So that's one of the things that they can use. So, um, right, recycled polyesters made by converting plastics to fibers, you can see there. So these are stuff that you need to be aware of. Uh, what we can we do to reuse, right, um, cover or fill? There you can see a lovely um, chair made by um, covering with, with old fabrics. Don't throw them away. You can rather than donate it. Um, so these are ways in which we can reuse it. Okay, so you need to be aware of this. Um, buy vintage or secondhand clothing. Um, and then a term that's of importance here is upcycling. Okay, you will see in your set of notes, um, under reduce, reuse, and recycle, that last sentence there says, recycling are is fashion as garments. Um, just change that to upcycling for me. Okay, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me just uh, show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so over here, this term over here, okay, 
right? Just change that to upcycling. Okay. Right, then we move on to, okay, so reduce, reuse, recycle. Those are ways in which we can reduce our carbon footprint. So you need to weigh, know of ways in which to reduce, reuse, and cycle, as I've shown you now. So that's important. Then another important thing is ethical clothing practices, right? So you need to know um, this. It refers to the way in which clothing is manufactured and sold um, and what the company does for the community. Um, so companies will qualify as fair business, fair trade businesses. This is the symbol that you see that you've got on there. Um, if they follow code of conduct, and this code of conduct must include, include the following. So you need to know this, okay? They must pay fair wages. They must have good working conditions for their workers. They should not make use of child labor. They should comply with labor and safety laws, and they should support environmental sustainability. Okay, so yeah. You need to know the fair trade emblem, there it is. And of course, you need to um, know um, under what conditions will they qualify as a fair trade business, okay? Um, just some reduced packaging ways, benefits for the environment. Okay, so some other ways in which we can reduce, avoid packaging, reuse packaging, this is for businesses. So please also just note, um, when they're asking in terms of packaging for business or whatever, when, when they are specific in the questions, right? So these are ways, reuse packaging, reduce the amount of packaging, use recyclable and biodegradable packaging as well. Okay, so we've looked at how we can make a difference. What can we do? Okay, so here are examples of things that we can also do, buy garments from um, or made from organic and sustainable textiles, support local designers and the reasons why. Okay, so you can have a look at that. Um, so in terms of the environment, saving the environment, in terms of um, these are things that we want to do. Okay, and why we want to do them. It's all there. You can have a look at those by yourself. Um, okay. So it gives you all ideas and stuff that you can do. And what are the, the benefits of recycling and reusing clothes on the environment? So if we look at the bigger picture, these are the benefits. Waste is reduced. So in other words, when waste is reduced, clothing is not thrown away. We need less landfills. Okay, so in that way, we're going to be saving the environment. Um, less textiles are produced, so there's less waste. Less water is used for the manufacturing of textiles and less electricity and coal are used to make textiles for clothing. So stuff that you... Um, need to study. I can't say that enough. It's stuff that we need to have a look at and study, which is going to um, help us. Okay, remember, okay, so I've gone through fair, fair trade um, with you. Then we come to what is a trademark. You will see in your set of notes, right? And so now we're going to get to um, the illegal, the influence of the illegal use of trademarks. So we know that um, sometimes people are willing to purchase, as we've seen, especially when it comes to young adults and they do, might not have the, the, the means to, but they're willing to wait to buy the fake um, because it's going to give them um, some sort of status, okay? So we do have those st stuff happening. So here you will see I've got different trademarks of different companies, etc. So what is a trademark? You need to know what a trademark is. Any word, symbol, name, or device that a person uses to identify and distinguish his or her goods from those manufactured or sold. Okay, by others. Trademark law protects the brand name of the logo itself, but it does not protect the item on which the logo is placed. So please be aware of that. Right. So, yes, that's why people specifically have a trademark, because they want the, the um, product to be recognized by people. They want to create brand loyalty. OK. Um, and they want to be able to distinguish these from another product. But we do find, right, that there is something which is known as brand piracy. OK, so you need to know what it is. So let's quickly have a look at what brand piracy is. It, it, um, brand piracy happens when a name similar to the name of a well-known brand is used with the intent to make consumers mistake it for the original. 
Let's quickly have a look. It says here it's a premeditated use of a registered trademark, its name, its packaging, and presentation. It is illegal and an unethical practice. So here you can see, um, I've got some, some illustrations here of where um, brand piracy occurred. Okay, so you can see that it's definitely um, done to confuse people. Subway becomes subday, etc. As you can see there with those illustrations. Okay, and then we've got another term here, counterfeit goods. This is an illegal copy of a product. Goods are generally sold in the informal market. Okay, so they illegally copy the, it's, um, a copy of the, uh, of the original. Sold through retailers over the internet, flea markets, roadside stalls. Um, okay, you might know of the Belleville market where they sell these, some of these counterfeit goods. Okay, so it is um, produced to look like the original. And then, of course, it's important that you know the consequences of brand piracy. Right, so let's have a look. The original manufacturers lose income. Image of the brand, um, image and reputation of the brand is harmed. Okay, so these are stuff that you need to know. The consumer may lose faith in brand names um, because it might be they might have bought the, the fake, uh, which was a poorer quality. There are no competition in the market. The registered original trademark owners are prevented from entering the market because the fakes are sold for cheaper and people are going to might be supporting the, the, the cheaper brands. It damages the retailers selling legitimate products. And it also deprives national economies of custom duties and tax revenues. Okay, so these are stuff that you need to know. Okay, um, so I've done a lot. I've said a lot. Um, I've tried to touch and it's an hour and a half for work that might have taken us maybe two weeks. So I'm trying to highlight the important things and grade 12, what I want you to know is as you've seen, this is, um, yes, we've compiled a set of notes here with all of the important stuff. Please make use of the um, examination guidelines also. Um, but as you can see, this is stuff that you need to go and study. Okay, in order for you to understand, in order for you to apply, in order for you to answer questions, you need to um, obviously study um, the stuff. So in conclusion here, what I want you to do is, and I have now, um, just without, this is also not in your, in your notes, this questions, but it is just so that you can quickly have a look. So I've asked you the first one. This is the second one. I haven't even done the other two, right? But um, just quickly write down, Right, in conclusion here, yeah, the um, right brackets, oh, sorry, choose a correct word or term between brackets, right? Only the word or term next to the question, right? So people, please remember that it's important to number correctly. Um, at the end of the year, when we mark, we, always, we sometimes find that learners don't number, so number correctly and make sure that you write the correct answer next to the correct number. So please do that for me at this stage with those two and then I'll quickly have a look at the other questions as well. Hi ma'am, we have about nine minutes remaining of this session. Yes. Uh, before the learners continue, can we just ask the teacher who is in the classroom to please complete the attendance register and the feedback form. It's very, very important, especially the attendance register. And you have eight minutes left, ma'am. You may continue. Thank you so much. Okay, um, learners. So if you can quickly just write down the correct term. Um, these are stuff that we've just gone through, right? And remember, as I said, um, it needs to be studied.
throughout grade um, 12, just have a look. Those are the answers. Just mark yours. And then there's another um, question I want us to have a look at in conclusion as well. Okay, now just want to get to the end. Okay, here's another question. From the list below, select five advantages of corporate clothing. Just write down the grade letters on your answer sheet. Please always make sure that if it asks for five, that you give five answers. Okay. So yeah, you just need to write down A, B, C, whichever one is the um, correct one. So if you can just do that in terms of um, advantages of wearing corporate clothing. Right, hopefully you've had enough time to identify five. Let me um, go and those are the correct answers, A, B, E, F, and H. Just mark yours. Okay, and then the last one, we've got a last few minutes. I must just get to the correct slide here. Um, no, not that one. It is this one. Ooh, it's, mustn't get to the, hopefully you haven't seen the answers before I've. Okay, so this is in terms of the fashion cycle. It says choose the description in column B that best match the phase in fashion cycle in column A. So here we've got introduction, rise, peak, decline, and obsolence. And so you need to choose um, the description that best matches um, those phases over there.
right grade 12s um let me reveal the answers hopefully that was enough time for you to select um so i'm gonna those are the answers there so just mark yours 